All right, so welcome again for the record. And uh, let me tell you that the career session today is going to be much interesting because it's going to be also part of the real world thing that we face and that we have to work on like practically in our careers as people who are growing to be in product facing professionals specifically. So let's get started and then I show you what I mean. <clears throat> All right, so the topic is on design thinking in a workplace. Design thinking, like design thinking. Actually, before we get started, who can tell us uh, what they think about this statement, design thinking? There are so many thinkings that happen in a workplace. Some people will talk about process thinking, others will talk about strategic thinking, and then others will talk about um, uh, design thinking itself. So when we talk about those process thinking, we hear about, you know, thinking in a terms of processes, like building things, not looking at the outcomes, but looking in the processes that we are trying to build. People who watch football, you understand this much better when you talk about process thinking. It's thinking about how you're going to be winning, winning the next match, instead of looking at how you will get to the outcomes when you do not even know which team you will be playing with at the finals. So yeah, that's process thinking. And then strategic thinking is much more understandable, like thinking strategically, especially in managerial or executive positions. Those are the, the people who think strategically for us as the employees of the companies. So what do you hear when we talk about then design thinking? Anyone who can tell us? All right, Ahmed. Hello. Uh, I'm hearing this term a lot, uh, but I'm not sure of its meaning. I think uh, it uh, designs the way you think. So you can uh, thinking better uh, or thinking out of the box. Out of the box, uh, I think it's about two things. Okay, that's good. That's a good answer as well. So let's get started and then hear more. And, um, you know, Ahmed, you will be getting an essence of what it means and what does it mean to us as uh, Gen AI people, as data engineers, and also as uh, machine learning engineers. So getting started, first of all, in all technologies, I want also to understand like a quick question that will help us understand it better like uh, referring it to our daily life think of all technologies you use on a daily basis what is one innovation or a new feature uh, that was created recently and that is helping you big time new feature brought uh, i have a, a typo okay created recently that is helping you big time. Anyone to tell us? I really want to understand. We use different platforms. I will give you an example. Have you realized that WhatsApp has separated all messages with the unread messages and also with um, the groups? You know, because I thought to myself that probably they were thinking about the fact that sometimes uh, you get to have unread messages and you leave them just because you probably didn't even see them coming. You didn't even see them when they were popping on your screen and you were busy doing your assignment and you'd end up having a lot of unread messages. And also they separated them with groups because probably majority of the times we do not like to check so many groups that we belong in. And as WhatsApp, they gain more money or they gain uh, their profits comes from how often we stay on their platform, how often we use WhatsApp. So they created those new features. They are easy, they are at the top of your screen. If you haven't realized, you can check now. And they are new, they are like a week old. And probably they put them there so that we can have the, um, 
we can be remembering to check our unread messages and groups. So like that's like a very small uh, example. So in your case as well, can someone tell me some of the technologies you use on a daily, a daily basis that you saw changing some of their features and it's helping you? Anyone? Anyone? Or have we not been having time to go through them? <laughs> you can tell me now in the chat box so that I also know where it stands. All right, Sheila. Um, I, I think for me, the technology that, okay, it's not that big of a deal, but it's the technology of reactions. Like, I okay, it, I know it has been there on Slack, but WhatsApp introduced it. I think, was it late last year or early this year? It has really, really helped me because, like, sometimes when you don't know what to say, you just put a laughing emoji. So I think it's really helping me even avoid lengthy conversations. Okay, super, super. That's an easy example as well. Yeah, the reactions are like a year old and they have been, you know, doing it. Michael? Okay, there is uh, an AI called Harpa AI to summarize the YouTube videos. So, because if there is a, the video is long, like 30 minutes, it can summarize it. So, I, I will keep my time. So, that helped me a lot. Okay, that's super. Thank you so much. And also, another technology uh, someone said um, Google Gemini. That's super. Yeah, Gemini came to really do some stuff that ChatGPT hasn't been doing for a while. Actually, we even have that discussion in this presentation. So yeah, Ahmed, thanks for bringing that up. And also we have another one I can talk about is Twitter. Twitter brought a job board, brought something like LinkedIn inside of it, but just job boards where you can go and Google different jobs because they realized there are so many people on Twitter and some of them might be looking for jobs. So they wanted to be like, why do you go on LinkedIn when we can have this feature for you? <laughs> so they have a job board there but as well. So these are like um, different, you know, what does this show us? It shows us different innovations that different companies see it and analyze and ideate about and create the prototypes and see that people are actually going to be loving them and they put them out there. So yeah, also sometimes they have the idea, but also they realize that people are not getting it well. Also taking an example of WhatsApp, uh, I don't know if you realize that in the past day, WhatsApp changed its color for like one day or two days. And so many people dramatically were like, but are you guys going to be buying us glasses? Because these colors are really not eyes friendly. Like they wanted to test something new, a different color, but it was not it. So they had to turn back to the normal WhatsApp colors we have. So those kind of innovations, those kind of features that different companies bring uh, just to innovate around their current uh, products that they have. So let's see, how do they come up with those specific features specifically. And of course, us as professionals who will be working in product focused departments, anything data engineering, it's focused on the product. You are always analyzing uh, different matters of factors of the specific product the company is selling. As Gen AI, you are always innovating about how Gen AI can be used to improve that specific product of the company. So as people who are in this department, we better practice how to do design thinking so that when we get in these chairs, we will not, we will not be like dormant, we will know where to start. So this is an important topic for us. So specifically, actually, what is design thinking? In a few words, without going straight to different definition, design thinking, it's a philosophy put together with a set tool with a set of tools to help you solve problems creatively. A philosophy, designing, when you think about the word design, 
the word art comes in your mind, art. Like you're trying to design something just from nowhere, just from scratch with just different um, views you have in your hands or with different materials or resources, just very few scattered things. And you put together that philosophy and a set of tools. That means the technology you currently have to help you solve different problems creatively. Let's see that in depth. But also think that there are so many approaches to, so, to problem solving. We've seen that in different uh, career challenges on problem solving. And why does design thinking specifically matters or set apart other uh, problem solving approaches is that design thinking focuses on human-centered side of the crea creative problem solving. It's the human-centered side. This is where we think uh, that, uh, let's say our technology, for instance, has a bug, but it's a bug in the technology itself. So that's when we try to solve that, we do not call it uh, design thinking. But when we are trying to address an issue, let's say I, um, a user interface of our products, because we want our users to be happy using our products, that means we are being so human-centered. So design thinking looks everything in the human center, center design lens. We want to talk about humans which interact with our product and we want to understand them and how we can help them to be successful or to keep loving to use our product. So let me show you. When we are into the design thinking exercise that we are actually going to be learning from, um, we get to ask ourselves these kind of questions. You know, when the CEOs that be like, can we use our design thinking to, to develop this or to solve this question or to solve this problem or to bring this creative uh, creativity, you know, creative feature, any new thing, they start asking themselves different of these questions. Like, who are we designing for? That's the very first thing, you know, because there are so many humans involved on a product and those humans can be actually your customers. They can be your internal team. For instance, uh, is there another department that actually needs you to work on your platform, the company's platform so that it can be easier for them to use as they help the, the the, the clients, for instance, the customer service team, majority of the times they work with the tech people to tell them like, actually you can help us simplify this work or simplify the onboarding tasks so that we can be able to onboard our clients seamlessly. So there are so many humans involved when we think about what uh, we want to use design thinking for. So defining who are you uh, designing for, Number two, what problems are they having? That's self-explanatory and also what are their needs? And ETC, so many other questions. And then you get to innovate based on those needs. So, and are, there are specific five steps that companies use in that process, which is the emphasize, define, ideate, prototype, and then test. Sometimes after testing, you can do implementation, but specifically, those are the five steps for design thinking. And when we talk about uh, emphasize and define, this is a stage where we are trying to understand the problem, who has the problem, what is the issue, and what insights can we actually gain from uh, all the information we get in the emphasize and define stage, and then get to understand what, what actually do we have to do? What the, what problem is there and what action do we have to take? And then in idea and prototype, this is where we try to explore what can work. In idea, we bring so many ideas on the table. And then when it comes to prototyping, this is where we try to prototype some of the ideas that we have and see what can work. And then we have testing and implementing in the materialized category where we put it outside for different people to test and then we can get ahead a go ahead that we can actually start to implement these 
So let's see. We are going to be taking a 10 Academy job search phase, uh, um, job search phase month as an example for this process. So I'm going to be explaining like each step by step and give you an example of how at 10 Academy we are actually doing this currently. So let me give you a bit background about the 10 Academy job search phase. So this is the phase that happens after three months of the training. We get to have this phase of three months where we go into the job application phase. Like we are actually intensively applying. You see how you are currently intensively learning? In the job search phase, we intensively apply on different opportunities out here. Because the main goal of everyone graduating at an academy is that you graduate with a job. That's our very main big goal as a team here. So when we are ensuring that, there are so many things we have been discovering and we are going to be talking about them as I go through step by step. Like what problems did we face? How are we trying to build on them using design thinking? The number one, it is emphasize step again. This is where you understand the people you are trying to design for. You ask yourself these questions. What is the raised problem? Who raised the problem? What do these people do? And what do they need? And a lot of other questions. When you are emphasizing, you, you, th this comes from you. You had someone raising an, uh, a problem. Like, to be honest, I am feeling like I'm stuck here here or I'm not accomplishing my work because these blocker, because of this specific blocker. So you try to understand what is that raised problem specifically? And also who raised the problem? And also what do these people do? Like what were they trying to do when they faced the problem? And also what do they need specifically? So what you do, majority of the times, it's not just to understand the problem and go work on it, quickly no it's better to release the surveys for you to back your problem scope with data because you want to understand it in depth you release survey you can conduct a few interviews uh like one-on-one -on -one conversation with the people who are having the questions or the problems for you to understand what is the exactly the problem and then uh, like in general emphasizing it's about emphasizing with people you are designing for so in the 10 academic contest, when we were trying to, um, to, to push people, uh, but mainly to give you like the whole goal, daily goal, when we are applying at, in the job search phase, you have a goal of applying for, on 40 applications per day. 40 applications per day. Like imagine that in your mind, it's crazy submitting 40 applications per day. So in the SGS month, like for the cohort A, the trainees told us that submitting customized CV and customized sub cover letter that we request them to do takes them much of their time. That's a problem. You know, we had like very few people just met, reach, reaching to the 40 applications target on a daily basis. And the main problem that majority of them presented was that, you know, you advise us to submit a customized CV. When I talk about customized CV or customized sub cover letter, it's the way you take your job description of a company and try to embed their keywords, uh, their keywords, their the language they used in the job description in your CV and in your cover letter. That means if you are applying on 40 applications, then you will have 40 different CVs, 40 different cover letters. So how do you feel? That's super a lot. That's super a lot. So everyone claimed that providing or submitting the customized CV and cover letters, it's super a lot. You know, they can't qualify for the 40 jobs application per day. So how did we proceed? We proceeded on defining. Defining is taking all the learnings from step one. Oh, by the way, before I leave here, 
So after hearing it from so many different trainees, what we did was try to test the problem by ourselves. So we called out two trainees who we knew were, were really active in the job search phase. And we were like, actually, we want to spend a day with you. So on that specific day, my task, me as Pascaline, was to spend a day with one of the trainee and to understand how ha the, he is actually applying. So I went ahead, he told me what I can help with. I just spent a day with him. And to be honest, it, it took us a lot of, it took us like uh, almost 10 hours to submit 40 quality applications. So we tried to test the problem. And of course, you can imagine we were just two people. So it was a lot. It was a lot. So that is the problem. We heard about the problem. Uh, we understood the trainees. And then we tested the problem by ourselves. And then moving forward, so what's next? In the design thinking process, you have to go ahead and then define. Define because you have like scattered information. And now what you have to do is to take all learnings from step one and break them down into meaningful insights. Be able to straightly answer these questions. Like this is the common problem. You are able to see that this is the problem. You know, so applying on 40 jobs applications per day, it's not the problem. The problem is submitting quality applications. You know, because they can use easy apply and they can be able to drop 80 applications per month, per day. But, you know, understanding those information and try to define what is the main problem. What is the specific problem? The specific problem here is not 40 applications. It's the quality, being able to submit the quality of application. And what is the main challenge? The fact that they cannot customize their CV and cover letters in a timely manner using like um in a short in a short time that is the main challenge and then this is you are also able to answer what observation you were able to make from you testing yourself and also from uh the views you had from the people who raised the issue and then next you are able to identify that these are the specific needs they request you are able to understand that uh, what they request is something that can actually help them be able to customize their CV without taking too much time. So that thing I'm talking about, it's a software or a feature in the tanks platform that can be able to easily customize everything. And of course, you cannot use ChatGPT or Gemini because they will give you things that are really, really um you know out of line like of course that we do as ai does as a general ai feature does so you try to understand the specific needs they needed some, uh, something that helped them customize their cv or cover letter easily and then what's after answering this question what you do is take all the step one outcomes and turn them into insights so the insights we have here like here they are just the fact that we know the common problem, we know the challenge, we, we have our own observation, and also we know what they need. And ETC, you can ask yourself so many questions in, in just you know according to the nature of your product or your company's product. And then moving forward, so what you do when you have all information you need, you start to ideate. You come up with different thoughts and ideas that matches the insights gotten from step one and step two. What you do is sit with your team and you brainstorm. You come up with different ideas. You discuss potential solution and you select the final solution because you can have so many ideas that are doable. But of course, at, at last, you have to choose a few solutions that you feel like. Sorry that you feel like you can go ahead uh, and move them to another step of the ideation, which is prototyping. We are going to see it. So what you do is sit with your team and brainstorm, challenge all ideas, like question each idea until you find a few that are feasible. And how did we, in the 10 academic context, we looked at like the job 
uh, the job search phase is a critical part of our training because we do not want anyone to leave the training without a job. It's a critical part. So this is something for us to really work on. As a team, we have to find uh, a big solution because we cannot advise them to go and hit easy apply on LinkedIn. That will not make them stand out because there are so many people who are in the job market today because of the tech layoffs that has been happening around so many companies in the world. So we cannot advise them to submit anything that is not quality. So what we do, we discuss different ideas. And the majority of those ideas, two of them stand out. Either we pay for a subscription on software companies like Scuba, there is that company that help you uh, customize your CV and your cover letter in just one minute. You know, so that's what that company is specialized in. That's what they do specifically. Or another idea is that we do what those companies did and we put it in our tanks platform. Like we put there a feature that is 100% able to customize your CV and to customize your quality without comprehending the initial, um, without compre compromising the true history of your CV. Because majority of the AIs that we give you are completely different CV and when you submit it, you feel like it's not you. So what we did was to go ahead and bring the idea of the fact that we can have that feature in our thanks platform. So, okay, Daisy, do you want to say something before I proceed? Okay, guess it was a mistake. All right, so um, that is it. That's where I was. Like we started ideating, we have two options, either scuba or developing the software by ourselves, like the feature by ourselves. And when we put together those uh, ideas together, we saw that creating that feature by ourselves from scratch in a way that it works 100% efficiently is going to be super hard going to require a lot of work and a lot of time and you know a lot of things but then also looking for the subscription for our trainees in that platform you know external companies it's going to be so not cost effective because you then that means that in a year we have to pay for everyone who joins the program and remember we do not just have cohort b we have people another program in U2J, uh, we have another program called Kifia, we have cohort C coming in a few months, we have cohort D coming in late this year. So we saw like this would not be a sustainable solution. And what did we decide last was to go ahead and decide that we are going to be building that feature in our tanks platform by ourselves, no matter what is going to be taking us. So we selected the most feasible idea. That means the ideation phase was done. Moving ahead, we went ahead uh, the, next four, the next process of ide um, design thinking is prototype. This is where you turn the selected ideas into simple, testable prototypes. And remember that they do not have to be fully designed. They do not have to be fully coded. It's simply have to be like a fake product just for text testing. So simply what we did here also was to create something that users can test for us. And what we did we do? We created a prototype, the thanks team created a prototype, and then uh, we had a few trainees jumping in and testing uh, in regards to how we explained that it's going to be working and how they see it. And of course, when you bring it, one big thing you have to include you have to prototype with the people who raise the issue not with the technical tutors not with the career tutors because they can have imagination and everything no you go ahead and bring the people who claimed those are the trainees and then they help you test and tell you that this is actually what they are looking for 
or they give you different feedbacks. Like you can improve on this, you can work like this. This is how it can help us and feel satisfied 100%. So yeah, when you are done with prototyping, you go ahead into testing. Oh, sorry, yeah, prototyping is just developing. And then when you go into testing, this is where you bring the prototype and test with real people. They help you with testing everything. So what you do, select people based on the personas defined in step one. You remember the people who claimed, then get real time feedback from them, real time feedback. Like they, they, they do ev everything they click. They tell you like, yes, this is where I want it, I want it to go. Uh, everywhere they see, uh, I mean, any new page that occur when they click something, they tell you we like this or we do not like this. Like they give you real time feedback. And then next, you get your test results and moving forward, you put together the new insight you learned from the results. And again, go through the whole five processes again, because even us, after prototyping and testing with the trainees, we got so many different other insights they shared, something we did not see when we were prototyping, we did not consider at all. And then they gave us the, uh, the insights and then we went ahead into, again, first step, which is um, um, the first step, which is uh, emphasizing. So you start emphasizing with what they feel and you put in your knowledge, of course, because you are the master here, even though they are the ones facing the issue, but you are the master, you know what can work and what can't work. So you start emphasizing, you start defining by developing insights of what you can do, uh, developing insights from those things they mentioned and then going into ideas of defining what's possible from the new feedbacks you received and then you prototype again until you have something ready to go out and uh, end life. So currently actually here at 10 Academy with that specific project, we are still into the, uh, the next phase of this testing, like almost everything is done so we are about just to test how it will work better for you guys as cohort B. So yeah, that is like uh, the easy, I, I believe using this example helped you understand how actually it works in a real world. So yeah, those are like, this is the final step of design thinking. So we have it in this uh, majority of the time, they call it as a summary, majority of the time, the design thinking, processes, we call them edicts, which is emphasizing with the person, emphasizing with your clients, emphasizing with your users, emphasizing with the beneficiaries of your product or services, and then defining the problem, trying to get insights from all information that you received here. And then number three, ideating the potential solutions have as many solutions as possible on the table and then select the most feasible one. And number last, create a prototype. Create a prototype that your users can look at and be able to give you more feedbacks before uh, uh, into testing. And then after that, when you have like almost your ideas and your users ideas together, you are able to go ahead and create something solid, something very final. So before we go into the exercise, can I get the reactions that we're still together? Okay, thank you so much. Okay, all right. Let me go into a simple exercise. We will not go in, into deep in, in because we have a whole challenge designed for it, but let's try to understand. So we use ChatGPT as tech people to debug different things, to test different things. Like we use ChatGPT in our general life, in our daily life. And we, some of the people also use Gemini. So I want to understand on your perspective, which one is your favorite between the two? Why and what improvements would you like the other to implement to satisfy your needs? I will give you the essence of the example. <clears throat> ChatGPT and Gemini are competitors. So they kind of offer the same product. And design thinking always will help you know how you can stand out to your competitors. 
from your competitors. Like if ChatGPT have this and Gemini doesn't, then the people at ChatGPT are always, always working day and night to know how they can plan and do something that is much more valuable than what Gemini has. Like it's a competition game and the competition game always you have to use this design thinking designing to what your users want more that your competitors have or that they do not have like you know it's always in that game and actually when you get to also be employed in your specific roles these are the kind of conversation that your ceos are going to always be asking you so let's use this example by looking at chat gpt in gemini which one is your favorite and why and what improvements would you like the other to Hello team, I had a technical issue. Same thing that has been happening, but let's go ahead. I'm trying to set it up again, but let's go ahead on the ChatGPT and Gemini example. Can anyone tell us? You can raise your hand or open your mic, it's okay. Yes, Ahmed. Okay, uh, I see Jabez uh, put it in the chat. I think I agree with him. Uh, GBT, uh, it's better in code stuff, but uh, when you need to chat for specific information or refresh something, I think uh, Gemini is better in this uh, part. All right. Uh, thanks for sharing that and anyone who has a different perspective or that's how we all see it all right michael okay uh, jamie and i have uh, a reference for the answers it gives so that's one advantage jamie and i has yeah Oh, that's super. I didn't know. So they, like they give you a reference of the answers they gave you. Okay. Okay. That's super. All right. Thanks for sharing. All right, a baby. Yes, Hillary. Oh, I'm sorry. I was talking. Uh, okay. Okay. Continue. Go ahead. Uh, I was I was talking without uh, opening my mic. That was a problem. I'm sorry. Uh, no. I go for Gemini. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, I go for Gemini. It's, uh, the design sim is uh, simpler than uh, G GPT. Chat GPT. As my friend uh, Michael uh, says, it's uh, at least as references that used for our uh, for the suggested solutions so i go for the gemini okay all right thanks for sharing uh hillary okay um and so i i um favorite is 
GPT for now, it's faster. If, if you just type any question, it's producing less than a second. And, but Gemini is, is too slow. It may take up to uh, several seconds up to 10 for you, for you to give your answer and the answer. It, and after it gives you the answer, it may even say, I, I don't understand what you say. Yeah, so yeah, so what I want uh, uh, Gemini to implement is like uh, to be fast in responses. Okay, it's fast in responses. Okay, that's great. That's a good observation. And we are going to use the same uh, observations in the challenge. And really, I would really like it if uh, we take this exercise as just a like a personal career exercise of something that you might face. So let's see other scenario. In 2017, when Zoom, a, a popular video conferencing platform began to be famous, Google immediately released the same video conferencing platform and named it Google. Actually, Google is really known at this game, you know? <laughs> someone releases something big and they release competition you know how chat gpt came out and then google bot was out so yeah so from then zoom started to face a very stiff comp competition from google meet because google meet still includes similar feature yeah similar feature as a package for their google suit what do we mean by google suit google suit is this one is this combination i hope you can see it yeah these things here can you see it let me see okay it's disappearing but i believe you can see it uh this these are the google suits so it's uh, like uh, um their main storage for all google applications you can use uh when you hold when you have a google account a gmail account so for companies that were buying Google Suite, because you know, for the company to get this dot 10 academy.org, uh, sorry, they at 10 academy.org, at google.org, at uh, which company, at adulgio.com, like those, for you to get that at with your company name, you have to pay for it on a monthly basis. So Google was like, you know, when they saw Zoom being famous after big, being in business for six years i guess zoom was created in 2011 i guess so in 2017 when it started to be famous when remote work was starting to be a thing google suit created uh i mean google created a google meet and added it in their google suit package that means for any company that paid for the google suit package they are able to use google meets for free and since that time, many Zoom customers have switched to Google Meet due to the cost advantage. Because everyone was asking themselves, like, why do I have to pay Zoom when I can have the same video conferencing on Google Meet? And that's actually a good question to ask. Why would you pay extra money when you can get the same service without paying extra money? So, yeah, this is the scenario we have. So you are going to assume that you are a Gen AI, Gen AI engineer at Zoom. Let's keep it in the loop of just in the scope of Gen AI responsibilities at Zoom. And your task is to leverage your knowledge in artificial intelligence, machine learning, and any knowledge you have in data engineering to develop strategies for Zoom to regain market share and attract customers back to its platform while maintaining its current pricing structure and actually zoom have done this they have done this and i want us to practice the same exercise and bring up new ideas not what they have created but new ideas which we are going to be talking about here in the question so you are the question number one you are supposed to go on zoom.com and learn about their free create an account to have full visibility of everything because when you create a free account you are able to see things you are not allowed to do because you do not have a premium account and all those other information about free and premium features they are also displayed everywhere on google you know everywhere on their website everywhere on youtube like you can have more information about this with any research you can make 
And then you are also going to be searching Zoom reviews on their both free and premium features. Search anywhere you can find the reviews, see what people talk about Zoom in general, or what they talk about their different packages or different features they have. Then based on your findings, like really do your really good research, and based on your findings, identify and explain in details the five key pain points and frustrations users experience with Zoom. Five key pain points and frustrations users experience with Zoom. Because actually, how, did, how does a company trying to regain its market share is looking at, at the pain points and try to develop solutions. Pain points can be pricings, but those are not your responsibility as a gen AI engineer. Some of the pain points can be different other features that do not work in a way that satisfies the users. It can be anything, anything technical. And those are the five things we want you to go and look up to. And of course, do your really good research. Do your really good research. Do not bring things that are already there. You know, things like uh, someone who might say like translation, Zoom has actually brought translation in many, in like 20 plus languages, so that people who do video conferencing like international, and there are internationals involved, someone is able to do their translation and read everything in their own language, like as captions. So those, are, those were generated by Gen AI engineers. Those are the ideas of Gen AI engineers. So we want you to go and see without all those being considered, without everything that has been developed being considered, what other pen points would you find that the um, current users are facing at Zoom? Just do your own research and you are going to be finding many. When we were doing this exercise with my team to see if you can be able to find the ideas, we found many more than 15. So we believe you can be able to discover five. Just because of time, we had to keep it at five. Just look at five, and they should be new. Again, so note, please explain, when you're explaining these pain points in full detail, like explain it in a way that you could explain while presenting them to your manager. Like give us a full picture of them, and you are allowed to use in technical terms give us a full picture do not say oh just translation is a pain point you know just that no explain it like you could explain it to your manager convincing your manager that you should have that feature that uh, sorry convincing your manager that this is a pain point so yep anything any idea and then moving forward by looking at this five Pain points. I then find explain in detail their respective five solutions that can be implemented with the use of AI. The sole main purpose of your solution should be to enhance user experience and providing a competitive edge from Google Meet. So what you do here is to look at these five pain points, develop your solutions that can be used as um, created using AI and that can actually be a competitive edge to Google Meet. This means you have to also go look at, at Google Meet, see if they do not have something similar like that. And then note, please explain in detail how your suggested solutions will work and make sure your manager will be able to see a big value and creativity from your suggested solutions. Again, please explain in details how your suggested solutions will work and make sure your manager will be able to see a big value and creativity from your suggested solutions. And number, number three, based on your proposed solutions on the second question, look at the feasibility and potential impacts of each proposed solution and select only three solutions you would confidently consider as promising solution. Tell us why you selected those three among the five proposed. And of course, base your selection to the potential to address the user pain points. This is our sole purpose. And also to differentiate Zoom from its competitors, which is our second sole purpose. 
So among these five, you will select these three and then be able to tell us, justify your answers. Why do these three stand out from all the five proposed solutions you have here? So basically, it's like you have two questions and then you have another sub question just to select what can work moving forward, three only. So keep in mind that this is a real world scenario. So take your time to do this exercise as if you were a Gen AI engineer at Zoom. A Gen AI engineer at Zoom. And then focus by saying this, actually, we have a trainee in cohort A who got a role in a, a company. Sorry, was it in cohort A? No, it was before cohort A. He got a role from a company randomly from uh, LinkedIn just because he emailed the hiring manager with a solution that he can provide in regards to what they published on LinkedIn that they were working on. So he just went and learned about that project and developed more of the solutions they were looking for and then direct emailed it to the hiring manager. He got the role just in one week because they realized he can understand what they're working for, the pain points they have, and provided the solution he can, be, he can be able to bring on board. He got a role in one week and he was one of the people who really finished the job search phase, unfortunately, without landing a job. So this is a good exercise. Let's take time and do it as if it was a real time uh, project. Then focus on the solutions that are technically visible and have clear value proposition to the users of course, value proposition to the mentioned pain points, and then consider ethical implications of AI implementation and ensure responsible and transparent user of technology. What do I mean by here? Uh, I mean, for instance, there is this new feature, I'm not sure if it's still there on Zoom, that Zoom created that it has a third party that enters in your conferences and is able to provide you uh, the summary of the meeting when the meeting is done. I believe also Google Meet has it, like it's able to summarize everything that was talked about in the meeting just in a few minutes, you know, right after the call. So, but then it was considered not ethical, it was a debate, you know, here and there, it was a debate. Many people were saying that, okay, so you are always listening in our meetings, because that's not ethical and they are not supposed to so zoom had to go and explain how actually they provide those summaries with keeping your company's information encrypted you know it, it was a long conversation so thinking about this also look at the ethical implications of AI implementation and ensure responsible and transparent use of technology yeah um that is it, that is it specifically for the challenge. Any questions, anything? Or is it clear? Yes, Martin. Uh, I wanted to ask a, a question, like here when you're telling us to find the five key pain points and frustrations of the, of the user, uh, and you say, you say that uh, we have to get, um, um, we have to get ideas that are completely new, but uh, what if if we make research realize that uh, there's something that um, let me say zoom is working on but that 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 is a major challenge and and uh, the solution is let me say it, it is something let me say google meet uh, google meets has but it's already in in production and it's the major issue that the users face should we avoid that and just move on to something else or we we can include it under our key pain points. Mm -hmm. If I understand your question well, it's like that thing is already at Google Meet, but at Zoom it's not there. Yes. Yeah, that's that that's a new idea. That's a good idea that can fit into this, into the no, answer. But, well, what I'm trying to say is that if it's let let's say Zoom already working towards it towards that direction within Zoom as the company. But uh, because you had said we can't, we can't, uh, we can't, uh, uh, we can't use key point, key pain points that are already 
like in production at Zoom already that we have to get our own. So um, that's what I'm asking. So, um, um, yeah, I understand the question, if I guess well, but not sure if you can be able to tell what is in their production now and what's not. I'm not pretty sure, but do you think there is any way you can know like what they have in production now? No, like if you if you read the reviews, you could know you could know if if something yeah, is being worked on. Yeah, so we just work with the information we have because we do not know what they are planning internally. So we just use the information we have. If that thing is not okay. there, then it's not there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yep, that is it for now. Then I think we can call it a meeting and then um, go really practice on this exercise. Uh, we are highly looking forward to your answers from your research. Okay, and also there are no limited slides to this, uh, to this assignment. So be as broad and, and as detailed as you want and be as technical as you want because we are all looking forward to be, be reading it through and we'll be seeing your creativity shine. So, yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great evening.